guys, it's your girl Angelica Marion. We're back again on behalf of Fate Global, the foundation for artistic talent and empowerment. As you know, we spotlight artists every week on Thursdays. We go live. We hope that their testimonies that they share, that you're inspired by what they say. Today, we will be interviewing Will Dalton. He's an amazing actor. We're hoping that you'll be inspired by the things that he went through within the industry, and we're hoping that you'll learn from his journey. Um, as you know, my name's Angelica Marion. We have a fake global, the foundation for artistic talent and empowerment. We have a nonprofit, and we provide artists with financial services as well as artistic services. We try to empower artists, try to keep them going and mentor them. So that's what we use our platform for. So today we're spotlighting you. Uh, we have Will Dalton okay. here. I already introduced you before you got on here, but... You know, as they come on, they can follow your Instagram handle below and connect with Will. Sure. Absolutely, right? And stay inspired by Will yeah. and his journey. So um, we're going to just jump right into it. We want to say thank you so much for taking your time out. I mean, you could have been doing anything right now, but yet you took time to come on here and, you know, inspire some artists, a fellow artist. So we really appreciate you doing this for us, King. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not a problem. My pleasure. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, we're just going to jump right into it. Um, I know a lot of people are probably wondering because they've seen you on different shows. We mentioned that you were on Loving. You've been on different um, films. You're an amazing actor. And so, hey, Olivia. We have people saying hello to us. Uh, <laughs> hey, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, people are probably wondering, well, how did he get those opportunities? So can you kind of tell everyone how you got started within the entertainment industry? Yeah, it's a long, long time ago uh, <laughs> I got started. Um <laughs> I want to age myself, but a, a long time ago. And uh, literally, you know, you just, you have a, a, an intuition, a dream mm -hmm. that you don't really know what's your dream. And then it, it kind of manifests itself. And so I just went a couple of different channels than a lot of people and um, ended up going to these conventions and those type of things. And, uh, you know, some of them turned out to be good. Some of them turned out to be scams. <laughs> but, uh, Nonetheless, I ran across some really good people that were involved, and they kind of pointed me in the right direction. So uh kind of started out in the industry modeling. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I can see no. it. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That was like 20 pounds ago. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, started doing that, uh, some, some commercial work. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, I'm all, I always wanted to do TV and film. Right. I didn't know I did. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I played played sports, but that was always a dream. And then once that happened and I kind of, you know, went in that direction and, and got an acting coach and, and got really, really serious about it, things started to happen mm -hmm. for me. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been blessed. It's been a hard journey, but it's uh, it's my journey. So I'm appreciative of it. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. I know so many people, they watch you. They watch your journey. They see you on these different films, and they're, like, wondering, how did that happen? So as a young boy, as a young Will, did you always know, like, okay, I want to be an actor? You said you kind of knew, but you didn't know. What were those little mm -hmm. or those little signs along your journey as you reflect now? Looking back, Did you you said you always kind of knew. So mm -hmm. can you kind of describe some of those things, some of those feelings as you look back now? That's a good question. Um, so, uh, I mean, it started when I was I was probably five. I was shy, shy kid. I didn't like the didn't like to talk. I didn't like the sound of my voice. Oh, I didn't like to stand in front of people. Yeah, I didn't. And uh, what's that? I said we go through that. You got to yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. You do, you do. And I didn't like it. Um, even at five, I just knew it. You know, I had like a raspy voice. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, I was shy. But when my when my dad had one of those, you know, camcorders, you sit on his shoulder, the, the old joint back in the day. The yeah, yeah, recorder. Old so that the yeah, old school, yeah, that's the only time I would ever come out of my shell and 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 talk. Wow. Is when he had that thing around the family and we family get together. I would get up and tell jokes and mm -hmm. and then after that went away and I went away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like nah. So that was that was kind of the the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to college, I took a well, and I remember mean, it was like in middle school. I ended up doing a um a play. Oh. I just I, I I did the play because it was a certain person that I was trying to impress her. Oh, <laughs> but uh, we, uh <laughs> so so in middle school uh, I got I didn't make the basketball team. Okay. okay? And I was like, I got to redeem myself somewhere. And then they were like, Hey, we got this play coming up. Mm -hmm. 
I, I hey, you know, I'm gonna do this play, you know. So I, it was a, a Christmas Carol. And I oh, ended up playing. Uh, how sweet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I ended up playing Ebony the Scrooge. I had like the worst accent ever, you know. <laughs> I was trying to, uh, <laughs> I was trying to do it with the. I sounded like I was from the Bahamas. I didn't sound like somebody from Ireland or, or whatever, but uh, whatever, you know, I, I did it and uh, I, I did pretty good. And, and I was like, oh, I like this. Nice. You know, it kind of reminded me of well, when I was five. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I, you know, fast forward to college, freshman year, I took it as a, as a filler class, theater arts. Mm -hmm. And um, I was at Campbell University in North Carolina and uh, a theater arts class. I'm a class clown. Literally, I grew into a class clown, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't tell, can you? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I, 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 I get it. I got. I took the point actually. <laughs> so, uh, so make, make a long story longer. Uh, I was, uh, um, I was, uh, I was doing the 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 class, the mm -hmm. theater class, and the professor was like, "Hey, you got something." And I was like, no, I don't. And he was like, look, why don't you minor in theater arts and, you know, get your major in, in, in marketing? Mm -hmm. and, and I said, Professor Doss, I, I apologize, but I just, I, you know, I don't have any interest in, in being an out of work <laughs> actor, like auditioning and right. all of that. Mm -hmm. I've since apologized. I've since, <laughs> right. since sent the email. Hey, Professor Doss, I don't know. If you know. <laughs> but, uh,. <laughs> So that, that's how it literally, you know, it kind of went in steps and mm -hmm. every step in life, it was something else to kind of remind me mm. of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. It kind of just, you know, it chooses you. You don't really, yeah. you know. I love that. I love that you said that it chooses you. That's awesome. So you say you spoke to kind of like auditioning a lot and things of that sort, and that's what we do as actors. But in your audition process, whether it been something you booked or maybe something you didn't book, what has been like your favorite role that you had to dive into or like your best set experience? Uh, man, you, you know, it's funny. My favorite role actually is a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a piece I did. It was on, it was a theater, it was a theater piece. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I, this was probably the first time I really just dove into a character. Mm -hmm. You know, I just went straight. My, you know, I was in, I was living it. And, um, I was doing a soldier's play mm -hmm. in, uh, in Florida, a, a good buddy of mine, a great friend, mentor of mine, Nate Jacobs. He owns the theater company mm -hmm. in Sarasota, Florida, uh, Florida, West coast, black theater troupe. And, uh, they brought me down to do a soldier's play. I actually ended up playing the same role that uh, Denzel played in the movie. Oh, nice. Never had seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I didn't know. And, uh, ended up doing it. But it was it was so crazy. Uh, this guy I played this uh, soldier named Melvin Peterson. He wore these glasses. Mm -hmm. That was his thing. He, he wore glasses. He was he was from Alabama. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember going out to dinner with the cast. We were, we were downtown, mm -hmm. and we went out to dinner. And I was sitting. I was reading the menu, and I have my tablet here, and I'm, I'm reading the menu, and I'm like looking at it, and I have the prop glasses on, oh. no lenses. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and my buddy Tom was. Yeah, my buddy Thomas hits me and was like, hey, hey, Will, you know, we're not in rehearsal anymore. You all right? And I said, oh, my God, I'm, I, that was it. I said, okay, I, I think I went a little far with this one. But uh, that was yeah. probably, you know, one of my favorite just to, because theater is different than film, mm -hmm. right? You got mm -hmm. months of preparation and mm -hmm. um, rehearsals. Mm -hmm. You get it right one night, you mess it up the next night, you know, right. you just back and forth so it's a journey mm. so that's that's why I think I like that uh that character a lot mm. it always stuck with me yeah I like that I like that so when you're really diving into your characters you forgot that you were you you were just still in character mode out to eat <laughs> yeah 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 you should have you should have saw the house <laughs> you should have saw the house I was living in not my roommates they were in the <laughs> they were in the play they were like these messy guys and you go to my room it looked like a military quarters it was like bed tight closet color tight closet color coordinated wow. and I didn't even literally in my mind I just did these messy guys and you go to my room it looked like a military quarters it was like bed tight closet color coordinated wow. 
And I didn't even, literally, in my mind, I just didn't even realize that my shoes were laid out. And I was like, what, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. The character took over you. The character took over you. That's yeah, he took, he, he took over. I, was, I said, I, hey, I need me back. <laughs> I need me back. I got to go home. <laughs> it's good that you say that. Yeah. Um, how do you kind of like, you know, when you have to leave your character, you know, on set or so forth, and you do have to come back into the shoes of Will, what are some different methods or things that you do to kind of like, you know, separate the two? Or do they kind of like, just you just let it work it out, work itself out on its own? Just, I let it work it out. You know, if it's, uh, I, for me as an actor, it's like, I can't force it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I was just telling somebody, um, which is a, it's a, a cool process. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to segue back, but I was just telling somebody about this. Uh, I'm, we're doing a two take challenge okay. with a, a casting director that I know, a, a buddy of mine, Erica Arbaugh. She's a wonderful casting director, Emmy Award winning. Um, she changed my career, by the way. But anyway, um, awesome. she has a challenge. Yeah, yeah she's, she's awesome. If you uh, Arbaugh official or Erica Arbaugh, awesome. whoever you follow her. You know, Eric, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, she's doing a two-take challenge right now where, where we do cold reads and, and then you dive into it some more and, and prep. Mm -hmm. And I had someone ask me about that. They were like, how do you, um, I, I, I think I forgot a little bit of the question. It was how do you go back and forth between, you know, the, the two or like, you know, how do you know or how do you prepare? And I said, you have to let the words just take you. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. as actors, what we try to do is memorize. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And you do that without without feeling. Yeah. Right. You you try to memorize it, there's no feeling behind it. Right. Right. You have to read the words first and interpret it and let it let the words guide you. Mm -hmm. So that's how I do it with my characters. I let my characters guide me. I don't try to force them somewhere that you know. Right. That's yeah. Somewhere they don't want to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, some of my characters don't want to be where I want to take them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be somewhere my characters want to take me. <laughs> right. uh, ooh, 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 yes, yes, yeah. I played, I played a mini. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I played yeah. that. So if you could choose your dream role, what would that look like for you? The next one. The next one. That's I mean, it's, I, I don't, I, I, it's not, it's not a, I don't have a dream role. It's just, you know, I just, I like to just continue to go. Mm -hmm. You know, do one thing. Okay, boom. Do a next thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, my dream is to just continue to get opportunities to to do what what we do, mm -hmm. you know. So Absolutely. that's yeah. I love that. So you kind of spoke a bit about how this has definitely been a journey for you, and you've gotten signs along the way that basically this career has chose you. So can you kind of mm -hmm. speak to you know because some actors they come across a lot of rejection, you know, within you know for every ten roles they audition for, they may get one. How do you handle rejection, um, you know, within that process? And can you kind of also speak to maybe some of the adversities that you face and what you do to overcome those things? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe I would say 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, me as an actor, as a person, our rejection, you know, you, you take it, you know, it comes with the business. Mm -hmm. But 10 years ago, I think I would have taken it a lot harder. Mm than now um as a matter of fact i really don't even take rejection hard at all right now um because you just learn that's the process mm -hmm. you know it's no overnight it's no magic formula you know what i mean it's it's you get it in you do the work that's where i find the joy mm -hmm. of it to continue to do it it's just really doing the work mm -hmm. yeah people think that the the satisfaction is you know, yeah, I, I absolutely. When you work, you know, you, this business is lucrative. You you make money. You you get to do all these cool things, and that's what the end product. Mm -hmm. My satisfaction, that's a part of it too. Right. My satisfaction is doing the work. Right. Knowing the late night auditions, knowing the um, you know, the 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 trial and error, the the, the fails, the highs, the lows. That's satisfactory to me because it's like, man. I'm learning along the way, mm -hmm. right? No matter what, I'm, listen, I've been turned down for so many jobs uh, recently, mm -hmm. you know, and, and mm -hmm. but it's a good thing for me, if you understand where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. as an actor, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I didn't have these opportunities, mm -hmm. right? I just started getting these opportunities five years ago, right. Wow. right? And when I started getting those opportunities and the right people started to see me and the right people vouch for you, mm -hmm. now it becomes 
the quality of what I've been doing mm -hmm. and getting better at it, mm -hmm. that speaks more for me than, you know, some social media post or something like that. Right. You know what I mean? It's when I get in the room, they, they know who I am. Mm -hmm. It's like, Will's here. we know we're going to get quality. Mm -hmm. and, my, and my agents tell me that too. It's like, that's what you want to strive for. Mm -hmm. You want to strive for not being famous, right? That comes with it. Right, right, right. Not being rich, that comes with it. Right. Um, but really just doing the work and being good enough mm -hmm. for those people in those positions to go, she just might work or he might. Let's bring her in. Right. Let's bring him in. Right. One, one thing my agents tell me, they say, uh, they, they say, you know, your job as an actor, when you get to a le with the level and then you continue to go up, mm -hmm. your job when you're coming into it, when people start to rec recognize who you are, mm -hmm. is to make the cast and director's job as hard as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and what that means is don't worry about who's in the room. Mm -hmm. don't, don't worry about who's auditioning for the role. You go in and you think, you know, you've gotten sides before. Right. How many actresses are going to do the same thing that the sides tell them to do? Right. Exactly. It's your job to find the, the you know, the, the flip it, do the 180. It's your job to do the 180, go back and say, I'm going to be the only one who does that. Let me make a choice. Right. And I'm going to be good enough to where you can't turn away from me. Mm -hmm. I might not get the role. Right. But my job is to make your decision hard. Right. And if you do that, then your name, you build up and they say, this guy's quality. Bring him in. Mm -hmm. And who knows? You might book something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you might book. So. I love that. Yeah. Basically, win the room. Win the room. Get you know. Win, win the room. Mm -hmm. Win it. You know, it's and don't don't like when people say that. You know, they 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 like they. Some people think, oh, I gotta go win the room. Like I gotta go. Like, hey, how you doing? Oh my God, hey, yeah. hey. <laughs> you know, you don't have to. You ain't gotta do all that. <laughs> no, no, you you ain't gotta do all that. It's you know, be. Be confident, mm -hmm. but don't be arrogant. Just be sure. Mm -hmm. You know what you're doing. You know, you do, you're there for a reason. If they call you in the room, you're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Think of it that way. And, and so that's how I adjust to, like, the nose. Mm -hmm. Trust me. I've had some pretty big nose. Mm -hmm. Not, like, recently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool with me. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy they called me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was a, on a select short list right. of people. And... You know, I'm not mad at that because I know I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. So that's how I handle it, you know. I love that. Yeah. That's amazing. That's awesome. You know, a lot of um, younger people, they watch this on the replay. and We got a lot of younger artists. And if you can go back in time and speak to the younger version of yourself, the younger Will, what is something that you would have said to him, the younger artist version of Will? What, what is something you would have said to him? That's tough. I don't know. I, I don't know if I would have said anything. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so funny. I mean, see, seriously, because I, 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 I'm a, I'm like a, a sound belief that things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe if I, if, if, if I have the success early, maybe I don't finish it out. You know, maybe, maybe if I, you know, it's a bunch of maybes. You'll never know. Right. So I just well, look I at it and say. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uncertainty. So I don't, I don't know if I would have said anything. I would probably just say, keep going. Keep going. Just keep doing, like keep going. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it, once you get there, you'll know. <laughs> just keep going. Yeah. That's awesome. Because it was a point. That's amazing. I mean, that, that resonates and that sits home, you know, because a lot of people, especially with everything going on in the world, in reference to the movement, in reference to, mm -hmm. you know, COVID-19, the different things that we're experiencing as a collective, a lot of people just need that one word to keep going. And they need to yeah, the influence of someone else that may have thought of not, you know, to kind of give up, but they see you again in these films and you're keep, you keep going, you keep pedaling. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're moving forward and that inspires someone else to do the same. So I love that you, that you chose to say that to yourself because I'm sure that a younger uh, version of you will watch this and just those words alone to keep going may inspire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause you never, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story real quick about the keep going mentality. This is, again, this is five, six years ago. Okay. I had a couple auditions. Uh, I was in my head about it. I'm, you know, I'm debating. Do I quit? Do I, mm -hmm. I'm just done. I was done with the industry. Literally. I was, I'm, I'm so sick of it. It'd be like, um, <laughs> it'd be like that a lot of times. It'd be like that. <laughs> a lot. All day. It'd be like that like an hour ago. Yeah, 
<laughs> wait a minute. Hold on. My agent just emailed me. Gosh, I quit. I'm playing. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have this one last audition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's really what happened. Mm-hmm. I literally, I went to, um, I, I was, I'm, I'm not, I won't name where I went, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I went to an audition in person. I, I, I drove down to Atlanta mm-hmm. and, you know, this whole thing happened and it was like, I was confused. Mm-hmm. You know, in the room, I was confused. Like, what, what happened? Right, right. And so I left. You don't really know how to feel. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the thing is, it was I was a callback okay. for for one of the lead characters. Okay. And it took two weeks for the callback. I went down. Um, keep in mind, the, the, and I'm not no negative. I, I, I never do negative talk, but it's, you know, the paint a picture. I get the sides. Mm-hmm. The sides have no, you know, none of the text to, to guide you. It's like words, characters. Your choice. Right. Okay. Well, my choice. Went <laughs> over it. We did your it. Choice, <laughs> I'm gonna take my choice, and uh, and I tr- trust myself. Mm-hmm. And so I, we sent it off. And two weeks, they said, "Hey, call back." Boom. I drive down, and I get in the room. The, the people are in there, mm-hmm. and the producer says, "Hey, yeah. So, Will, you know, we watched your your tape." I said, okay. Yeah. He was like, eh, eh, well, yeah, and and. Right there, I was like, whoa, are you trying to throw me off? Straight face. I looked at him, I said, okay, you know, what, what's going on? He says, uh, ah, you kind of played him. He wasn't really like it in my mind while he's talking. I'm like, but you realize there was no breakdown even for the character. It was our I choice. I that for you. I created it. Yeah. You see, you see so I'm like, okay, I, I, obviously I don't know what you were thinking when you wrote it. I, that was my interpretation. Right. Just give me the feedback. So they gave me the feedback. I had no argument. I took it like a champ. Did the adjustment. Boom. Thank you for your time. Okay. Okay. And I, I, yeah, so they were like, they were like, we'll stick around. You know, we might ha- we might do another cold read with a new scene. Okay, cool. Cash now comes out and says, Will, you're free to go. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so. Oh, he's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And keep in mind, this was this was a, this was. I had been in the situation numerous times with these same individuals and it's okay. And up for the lead every time, every time they were giving me every excuse. Okay. You're not there. there, there. Okay. I get it. That time broke me. Cause I'm like, okay, guys. Okay. And if you're trying to see if I have thick skin, I'm in this business already. You ain't got to do that. You ain't got to break me. You know, we can be teammates. You ain't got to be like the overbearing coach. You ain't got to do that. Right. 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 Tell me what you want. Right. So, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I come home, drive all these six hours, whatever, back. And um, uh, I told my wife, I said, you know what? I'm done. Mm. She was like, she was like, whoa, I ain't never heard. Whoa. I said, nah, I'm done. I was like, you know what? F it. I, I, I threw every cuss word you can imagine. I said, to, to hell with them. And just to hell with the business. And uh, literally, um, at that time, time we were we were planning on maybe like moving to LA mm-hmm. we had saved the money we, was, we got the money you know I was I just gotta let's just go I know people and it'll be better right and every time we were looking at places and then that happened in conjunction so I just shut down for like a week mm-hmm. and I was like I'm done mm-hmm. so I get a phone call missed the phone call I don't care so I get a text message mm-hmm. answer your phone it's my agent at the time mm-hmm. I was like who is it it's like it's Erica Arbaugh Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, okay. Erica had cast me for AMC's turn mm-hmm. a, a long ago, a couple episodes. So I said, okay. So I called her back. It was something that I couldn't do. It was, it wasn't a job. It was like she wanted me to come and do a workshop mm-hmm. at, uh, at uh, Old Dominion or something. Like that. Anyway, make long story short, she said on the phone. Erica says, "Hey, now that I have your number, there's something that I, I'm, there's something coming across, and I want to reach out to you in like two weeks." Uh huh. Okay. No, well, well, yeah. All right. To so me, as the skeptic, I'm like, yeah, all right, I heard that. Too. Okay, okay, yeah, all right. I'll click, click. Right. Done. I'm done. I ain't answering the phone. Two weeks later, I get the, all these, my thing starts alerting to my agent, Anne Marie. She's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm laying down." She's like, "Yo, uh, check your email right now. Get the computer." She calls me. Get the damn computer. Check the email right now. Okay. You know the computer. She's like, do you see the, the, what I just sent you? Okay, yeah, I see, I see what you sent me. What is it? 
So it's like it's a feature film, but it's independent. Okay. Now, you know as an actress, when you right. see the independent tag. Right. Right. <laughs> I said, I said, okay. I said, look, I'm, I ain't doing $100 a day independent. You know, no, I ain't, I ain't bigger than nobody. You don't want me out of But I ain't. You, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> They're like, okay, I'm going to do a movie that doesn't go to any film festival. Right. It, it, it sits on somebody's desk. I get paid a couple hundred dollars. Right. What am I? What is this? So she says, open the damn email. So I open the email, I read it. And it says, er- Erica Arbol mm-hmm. sent, we would like to see Will for this role. Mm-hmm. The breakdown. <laughs> the first person I see, executive producer, Martin Scorsese. Wow. <laughs> so I keep reading, and it was like Colin Firth, Jeff wow. Nichols, <laughs> all of these people. And I'm like, yo! So she was like, what are you doing now? I'm like, nothing. She's like, come to the studio. Oh, you need yeah. To. <laughs> yeah. She said, she said the tape's not doing for three days. Let's do it now. Okay. Well. Hadn't even seen the scene. <laughs> <laughs> we go in. I knock them out. Boom. Just send them raw. I had an intern reading with me. Wow. Shout out to Z- uh, Zane. She's an actress. Dope in Atlanta. But she was an intern at our agency at the time. Read with me, we killed it, knocked it out, and lo and behold, and that was loving. That's when I booked wow, loving. That's yeah, that's a dope story. Yeah, yeah. So if I would have left and went to California, if I wouldn't have had the shitty audition, wow. <laughs> if I wouldn't have, none, none of that would have happened. So that's why I said I would have. I would have just told myself keep going, because wow. you never know. One thing can change everything. Mm-hmm. One thing can change yeah. everything, and it's amazing how all things work together. So amidst all the things that are going on in the world concerning the movement, you know, can you kind of speak to your character and loving just kind of your set experience and just that kind of foreshadows what we're going through today, you know? Yeah, of- yeah. Mm-hmm. But that was that was a fun time shooting that movie. It was, you know, just thinking about it, the memories, I'm, and I'm still tight with a lot of the, the, the cast and crew. Nice. Um, Jeff, the director, a buddy of mine, I just talked to him the other day, um, literally. And uh, yeah, man, but just shooting that movie and seeing it, mm-hmm. even with the characters and seeing how everything was, it does, I mean, what was that? That was five years ago, mm-hmm. or four, four years ago. And we're literally still talking about things. You know, and this movie, the movie, the characters themselves was 56 years ago or 58 years ago, mm-hmm. right? with that Supreme Court decision. So when you put it into like a timeline, these things are still so relevant. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, look, my my dad's 70. Mm -hmm. You see? And so he lived that. Right. Wow, yeah. He he, he tells me the stories, you know. But one thing my dad never did, and this is something I got to credit him for, growing up the way they did, Growing up with, you know, with the clan heavy, hell they, I mean, hell they heavy now, I guess. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you want to think of it that way. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my dad, what, he, what him and my, my mom, what I credit them for is no matter what they went through. My mom was the first black person to, to uh, go to her school. She was the first person to segregate her school. Wow. So this is history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, but they never, they never taught me. They taught me all of the history. Mm-hmm. But they ain't never teach me to hate. Right. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it was like, it was like you, you don't hate nobody, but this is what happened. Mm-hmm. You know, th- these are the things that happen. We tell you so you guys can make it better. Yes. You know, and I, and I think that's what happens now. Uh, we don't have enough people from the past that they you know they teach the history but then they teach hate behind it mm-hmm. you can teach your history without teaching hate and say hey this is what happened right. and i you know i might not have been a part of it but your granddaddy <laughs> maybe was a part of it and i'm ashamed to even say that i love him but this is how his beliefs right so we don't want to believe like granddaddy exactly. you know what i mean but they, they just pass it so you know i think this younger generation i think they're going to be the the catalyst to kind of get it up out of here. Cause, I think so as yeah. well. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I'm, I'm excited. Um, you know, I'm troubled by the things that we experience as a people, but I'm also excited about the revolution and the things that us as a people are doing collectively to mm-hmm. 
uh, you know, make things as they should be, you know. Yeah, but, sure. <laughs> you know, but yes, thank you for addressing that. So amidst all these different things that we're experiencing and just, um, you know, learning a ton of lines, auditions, rejection, uh, life, just everything, you know, mm -hmm. you know, your, your uh, personal life, things of that sort. What are some things that you do to stay well? What does Will do to stay well? It, it, my family, you know, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife, my kids, mm -hmm. that's, you know, other than my, you know, my father, mother, siblings, and all my friends and family, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. But those three, my wife and my two kids, mm -hmm. that's it. That's you know, the, yeah, the, the industry can end today, and I'm, I'm all right. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I got them, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't. Yeah, no, it's true. Cause it's, and that, you know what? That, that goes back to what you said. How do I address the nose? That's mm -hmm. that's the reason why I have matured. Mm -hmm. To be able to say, I don't give a damn about the nose. Mm -hmm. You can look. You can tell me no to you blue in the face, but when I come in the door to my crib, it's just daddy. Mm -hmm. Daddy's home. You know, let's play. Let's do that. That's <laughs> so, awesome. I don't, care, I don't care about no nose. Yeah. No, that's, dope. that's awesome. You know, we bring different artists on here and cast and directors, and stuff. they say the same thing that you always should find something else to focus on instead of just acting. Because some actors just truly just obsess over booking a role, not booking a role, and they, they end up in mm -hmm. misery, you know, and it's just mm -hmm. a downward spiral. But again, you have your family that keeps you motivated, grounded, and inspired, and, you know, people mm -hmm. find different things, whether it's fitness or whatever it might be, that keeps them grounded and inspired and not so focused on, again, the industry, you know, that's this, this yeah. industry. Mm -hmm. You got to you gotta disconnect from it mm -hmm. at times. You know, and I think that's one of the reasons why I really never, even after the whole L.A., the, I mean, I, look, I, in the last five years, I could have moved to L.A. a couple times. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. You know, I was, I'm, I'm all right to do that now. But at the same time, it was like, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I can get to where, if they want me, I can get, you know, I just, my last movie, I just, I, was, I spent five months overseas. Mm, wow. Right? You know, yeah, so we, if if they want you, it don't matter where you are. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, and Jeff told, yeah, Jeff told me that Jeff lives in, in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. He don't even live in LA. Right. And he was like, what, you ain't got to live in LA? Yeah, it's like, and I know that's the dream, you know, when when people see you living in LA or walking down the day or they like, oh, they made it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, listen, I know, I know a couple of dope people from the same area I'm from. Mm -hmm. Who don't even live in LA, and they on they're like series regulars on on NBC. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? We're we're doing films, and so you ain't you don't have to live that life mm -hmm. if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can still be, and that's a message I guess I'll give to the younger people. You don't have to. I, I guess people will flock to Atlanta's or the LA's or New York's. Mm -hmm. And listen, that those are the major players. Mm -hmm. But if 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 you do what you're supposed to do, everybody's journey is different. I didn't have to live the struggling LA story mm -hmm. to be successful. I didn't have to sleep out of my car, or, you know, find out what my next meal was coming up, you know, none of that. So I'm blessed in that, in that regard. Mm -hmm. So now that's why I don't take it for granted either. I'm like, man, I'm in a good space. Right. Yeah. I'm in a good that's space. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So you kind of spoke about your family. You also spoke about some of the relationships you have with cast and directors and you're always shouting out your tribe. So that's amazing. But can you kind of speak to how you pretty much stay authentic within your relationships, how you build these relationships with cast and directors, agents, things of that sort, as well as how you ba balance your relationships personally with your career? Because we have a lot of fathers that are in the industry and, you know, sometimes, you know, they they feel, you know, that like it's a struggle for them to balance. I had another father come on here that's an actor, and he talked about, you know, trying to find balance between fatherhood, being a man at home, as well as being an actor, being an artist, and, you know, being, mm -hmm. you know, caught when he's needed. So can you kind of speak to how you balance those things out and just kind of give a little bit of advice to another father out there? Well, for for one, I, my wife, I guess that's it. Like, oh, literally... Right. Give her all the credit. Mm -hmm. Nah, that, and that's real. That ain't even me trying to get no brownie points. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. she she used to work in corporate America. You know what I mean? She she was had a, a very important job, worked, worked in the in the uh, the legal field. She was, you know, uh, in court every day, wow. <laughs> you know, and we had children, mm -hmm. and she's at home. Mm 
mm-hmm. and I go. And without her doing that, I you know I don't have a I don't have, really have a career because it's you know we we both gotta be parents, mm-hmm. and she affords me the opportunity to not only be a, a parent, and and she's a great parent, great mother, great wife. But she, you know, she knows, she sees the bigger picture, too. Mm-hmm. She's like, look, I hold it. I mean, she, listen, she, this woman held it down five months. <laughs> I was going out of the country. Wow. And I was so, af- I was so afraid to tell her where the job was shooting. <laughs> I, I lied about it. She, she kept saying, she kept saying, well, honey, where is this, where is this Sergio movie shooting? I was like, man, I think it's going to be in, like, Nevada. In the de- you know, because it's Middle East, they're gonna shoot it in the desert. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting on my agents now. I knew where it was shooting. Oh, I knew where yeah, it was shooting. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had to hit her with the reverse psychology. Yeah, yeah, I had to hit her with reverse psychology. I said, yo, I said, honey, man, they get they they offer me the job. She she said, oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm gonna have to turn it down. She said, whoa, 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 whoa. That's reverse. That Why you? That'll get a woman, yeah. Uh uh-uh, uh, not said, you not turn that job down. Yeah, I said, well, honey, I got it. They they tell me I gotta go. I gotta be in 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 Amman, Jordan, and in, in Thailand, and all these places. She said, "Whoa, we can. I mean, we can work that out." You gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Was yeah, good. but but the dope the dope part about it, she actually, uh, she, her and the kids actually got to come over to to, to Thailand with me oh, for ten man. days. They got to spend ten days with me um, wow, while we were crazy. filming. Yeah, I had off time, so we yeah. took them. We we went everywhere. It was cool. They loved so, it. Amazing experience. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Well, I'm very mm-hmm. happy for you. Can you kind of speak to a little bit briefly? You talked about it before, but you know, you building these and maintaining these relationships with these casting directors. Yeah. Sometimes people can come off unauthentic. So can you yeah. kind of share a little bit about how how that works for you? Yeah, I I mean. I, I don't know if I can really give advice to do it because it's nothing I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not mm-hmm. something that I'm not actively going, I got to be friends with these people and get stuff. You just, it just happens. I, I'm just being myself. Mm-hmm. And that's something that that's, that's my parents. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad has, and my mom both, they never, never met a stranger. If I go to, if, when I was young, I used to go to the grocery store with my mom, and I'd be like, oh, hell, sweet. oh, my God, mom, I'm hungry. It's like an hour later, she's talking to everybody. Mama used to do me the same way. Oh. Yeah, you're ready to go. Mm-hmm. They're like, Mama, ice cream is melting. <laughs> Shut up, boy. Right. But, uh, <laughs> right. okay. but no, that, that's it. You know, just family. You know, I had a great, and I said, and I not had, I still have a great family structure mm-hmm. with my siblings and my parents and, and aunts and uncles and everybody. And communication was always a big thing, mm-hmm. you know, it's just because we had so many of us. I mean, hell, we like the Wayans, you know what I mean? So <laughs> many of us. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So it's like cousins. I mean, so you, you just got to, you got to know how to communicate with people and you got to just be authentically yourself and, and always be yourself. You know what I mean? And, if if you're quiet, don't try to force being an extrovert. Mm-hmm. You know, if 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 you're an extrovert, be that. But you know, it's, it's, it's certain ways to do it. And I learned over the years. You know what I mean? Not to force. I, I, when I was younger, I probably did try to force it too much. Right, right, right. Like, man, I'm, I need to I need to get with him. Oh my God! And he, do you know who you are? And the person standing there like, yeah, but who are you? <laughs> you know, tell me about you. I know who I am. Right. Um. Right. So that's. You know, for me, it's like, nah, it's just, I go in and do my job first and foremost. Mm-hmm. But on the set, this is, I, I'll tell you this, and this is not something I do. It might be on purpose just because it brings me joy mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. But when I'm on a set, I'm like, yo, um, he caters the food. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to just walk past him like he's a nobody. Mm-hmm. I'm, we're going to have conversations every day. Mm-hmm. He puts my mic on me every day. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm here for 42 days. We may as well kick it and hang out. Right. right. So it that's me just being a team. And that comes from sports, too. I'm a teammate. Yeah. Everybody's important. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even the water boy. You know what I mean? Everybody's important. Right. So that's how I treat that's people. Water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Always. Always. And, and, and I, don't, I don't think I, I'm speaking out of line when I say you can ask any producer, director, uh, you know, crew member or whatever, and I don't think anybody would have a, a, a bad 
thing to say about our experience together. And that's why we still, I still communicate with these people every day, somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. awesome. That's amazing. Amazing, amazing uh, opportunity for you to even be able to say that, you know, so that's awesome yeah. that you're leaving those types of impressions and really just building that community of people around you. So you shared a lot of different things with us. You talked about how you got into the entertainment industry. You know, you also talked about kind of how you, along the way, along your journey, signs were just kind of delivered to you to keep you going. And that's something that you would have said mm-hmm. to the younger version of yourself. So thank you so much for sharing all those different things. If you could leave maybe three tips that you would leave a fellow artist, something that they could be doing, maybe not necessarily right now during this time, you know, of uncertainty, but just in general as an artist, if you could say three things, three tips you leave, what is it that you say to them? Um, That's a good question. What do I say? Three three things. So just pretty much um, their artistic careers. If they're trying to advance, if I'm an artist and I'm trying to advance my career, what is three things that I could possibly be doing? You know, maybe I could be studying or taking classes or what are some things that people mm-hmm. and they should be doing? Three things, you know, they could be living life, riding their bike, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, that's to me. You know, one one of the things I say is just live, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're going to be playing people, mm-hmm. and if you're portraying somebody and you haven't lived, you know, that's that's pretty. You can do it, but if you've lived the full life, you can bring so much more to your character and, and bringing a little bit of you into it. So, you know, that sets you apart. Right. So I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Um, two, just be authentically you. Mm-hmm. Right. It, mm-hmm. and, and what I mean by that, listen, if, if you, if you're loud and obnoxious, mm-hmm. cause some people authentically them can be that, be that, but if you be, be that, but just know how to be that in good taste. Yes. Be authentically you with good taste. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 then just you know, don't give up, don't give in. That's a good one. That's a that's a that's a most deaf quote. That's that's a most deaf song. I love that song. <laughs> don't give up, don't give in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's um. Oh, can I can I tell one quick story about that? Um, I didn't have the opportunity. <laughs> I, I I didn't have the opportunity to meet. Uh, uh, to meet this person on this particular night because my plane got delayed and I missed the event. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, my friends, they went to this banquet in Sydney Portier okay. where I was supposed to go with him. He asked Sydney, one of my friends, Stephen, asked Sydney. Stephen Slate's another dope actor. Okay. Um, but he asked Sydney, he said, you know, hey, man, you know, I just want to know as a young black man, what you did in the industry when you came up, that's unheard of. He was like, how did you just not give up? Like, how... Wow. With everything going on, how did how did that happen for you? Mm-hmm. And Sydney says, I stayed in line. And wow. My friend, so my friend took it as you stayed in line, like you. Oh, you didn't get out of hand, and you didn't say much about things. And then he was like, Well, wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Right. And Sydney broke it down. And I didn't hear him say it, but they told me what he said, okay. and it was dope. So, he, so Sydney says, Listen, he said the industry is like a hot, a hot nightclub, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody is trying to get into it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Everybody's trying to get in. It's like your Studio 54, Roxbury, or something like that. You're trying to get in. Mm-hmm. He said, what, what do you have at the clubs? You have lines. Mm-hmm. When, you go, when you go downtown, if a club doesn't have a line, you don't want to go. Ain't nobody in there. Ain't nobody trying to get in there. This is true. He said, so, he said think of the industry as a, as a club or you know, some happening spot. You want to get in. Everybody's trying to get in. He said, but the line is so long, it's wrapped around the block, down the street, around another block, down the street, over there. Mm-hmm. He's like, so you just pulling up, because these are how many people going to be in line mm-hmm. in the industry. Mm-hmm. You you get behind the person next in line. You can't even see the door, because you're all the way around. Right, that's facts. So he that's says, you, that, that's facts, right? Like so he says, you peeking, trying to see how close you are. Yeah. Look, look, you looking at your watch. Ooh, it's getting late. This last call going to be in a minute. You thought you were so, going to so, so, go home. I don't even want to come in here that day. Yet you still there you, there you go. See, and that's the thing. And that's what Sydney said. Sydney said, after a while, he said, and he put it in time increments, but associated it with life. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, after a couple minutes in the line, you were trying to get to the club after 30 minutes, 
you know, he time seems, seems like it's just dragging and going by. And he says, people are complaining. He's like, people in the front of you are complaining. Man, this is just taking forever. People behind you complaining. Man, this is taking forever. He was like, and the complaints turn into louder complaints. Whispers turn into complaints. Complaints turn into action. And then those actions is a group of friends saying, let's leave and go across town to the other club. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. He said, so after about a year of that, maybe two years of that, three years, a month, whatever, how many, you know, equated the each. He said, the people who was in line with you, they ain't got the, the you know, the wherewithal or the gall to stand in the line this long. Right. They tired of standing in line. They want to get in. Right. It's all about getting into them. Exactly. But if they can't get in on their terms, it's like, man, bump it. I'm going. Mm-hmm. So it's like, after a while, all of these people are saying, let's go. Mm-hmm. And you keep moving. You keep moving. You keep moving because you stay in the line. He said, the next thing you know, the guy, the security guard is there with the, at the gate. And he opens the rope and says, next. Wow. And it's your turn. That's <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that, that, that story is dope as hell to me because it's yes. like, yo. That's like, you know. That really depicts it very well. But that's exactly how it goes. Yeah. Right when you yeah. To walk away, you about to be pulling your car keys out and everything. You walk back to the car. And then the <laughs> security guard like, all right, you got your ID? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's You know what I mean? Thanks for sharing that. that I like that. Yeah, that's, that's a story. That 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 res- that went home with me. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you sharing that story. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to meet Sydney's wife too. I told her about that. I didn't, you know, he wasn't there, but I got to meet his wife. And <laughs> I told him about that story. That's yeah, awesome. it's cool. Amazing, amazing. Well, man, King, you told us so many different things. You shared so many experiences about diversity, places, everything. You know, stuff you tell the younger version of yourself, and just so many different tips and tools just from your experiences. You know, within this industry, you're not giving up. You told these different things, and we're hoping that someone is going to be inspired. I'm pretty sure they're taking notes, and they're going to be inspired by what you said. Guys, again, if you missed it, watch it on the replay. We have thousands of people that watch it on the replay. You can connect with Will. His social media handle is below. Connect with him. Follow him. Be inspired by what he's doing. Journey with him. Follow Fake Global if you want to catch this full interview live there. And, again, King, we really appreciate you coming on here. You could have been doing anything. You're wearing your crown extremely well. And we salute you, brother. We appreciate you. And thanks again for doing this with us. No, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for what you're doing for for the next generation of artists and and this generation of artists. Mm -hmm. And I wish you well in your career and everybody else as well. Um, I see a couple people. Romero, what's going on? Everybody from uh, from the Jordan clan of mine, what's going on? I see (laughs) y'all. Miss y'all, man. (laughs) Awesome. Well, we'll sign off, guys. Again, I'm Angelica Mariano on behalf of Fake Global, the Foundation for Artistic Talent and Empowerment. We are a nonprofit. We do this for free. We come on here live. We bring artists on, hoping that they'll be inspired by, uh, that you'll be inspired by their stories and we can inspire each other. And again, we provide these financial services and mentorship services for artists. So connect with us. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Brother, we'll let you go so you can get back to the fam bam and continue your night. But again, thanks again for coming on here with us, and we're going to continue to connect with you, okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Thank you soon. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.